Welcome to TRX Bench and part 2 of our balloon show. And for everybody who might not know, this is all about amateur radio. Well, and let's right start into the video. And uh, if you don't have seen part 1, uh, I highly, highly recommend to uh, watch video 100 so there we have our part one and we have all the basics which uh, we want to extend today and uh, therefore yeah if you do not have seen part one simply start with part one okay and for all who already waited for part two here it is and what you can see here are different cores and it all starts with the core material and uh, that is what uh, I already mentioned but uh, we want to start today to distinguish all this uh, different uh, material and uh, we want to check out if the material we have here on the bench is useful for our purposes, okay? Okay, and what you can see here is a test configuration to get an information about the core material. So, sometimes uh, we have some uh, cores uh, at uh, our store and uh, we do not really know can uh, we really use this uh, core material and uh, therefore uh, we simply put uh, 10 turns here on uh, each of uh, the different uh, core materials and uh, you may know that if we put turns or winding onto a core material then we will have an inductiv inductivity and uh, as more turns we have as higher our inductivity is and uh, well therefore I put on all these uh, different cores I put 10 turns so that we comp so that we are able to completely distinguish and compare this material to each other and uh, to determine which one is best for our purposes, okay? Okay, and I prepared it here all a little bit and uh, what you can see is uh, we have uh, four graphs and uh, each of this graph is representing one of uh, the four cores we uh, have tested. And uh, this uh, will only give you an idea that uh, you know uh, what uh, you need to, to focus on and uh, how you can test it. And the test setup is as simple as uh, can be. So we really put uh, our input signal here and uh, we read it uh, here at the end of uh, our wire which is uh, turned here over the core material and uh, therefore we uh, have a respective uh, inductivity and uh, we will see uh, resistance over the um, over the bandwidth we are testing and that will give us at least an idea if we can use this core material or not. Well and let's uh, investigate here our first graph a little bit and uh, yeah it is here uh, my marker 6 uh, which uh, I can go along and uh, well what you can uh, see that uh, we have really a very low attenuation over the frequency and uh, here even at uh, um, you can read it here even at uh, 23 megahertz which is uh, it's not uh, the center but uh, here we have the center at uh, 25 0.5 megahertz and uh, you can uh, simply read that uh, we only have 11 dB 
right and uh, if I go up here to um, yeah let me go to 30 megahertz so that is then the short wave range you see we only have 13 dB attenuation and that uh, is uh, telling us that uh, this core material is not really useful so the important message is that you need to know which core material you are using because if you would use this core material for a balloon which you are going to produce then you will fail and you have no chance to get a good balloon with a respective uh, common mode attenuation with this core material. And the core material which is failing is uh, this one here. And uh, this is a, a, a ferro powder material. And uh, well, you know, um, this material uh, is used for resonant uh, circuits, so for very, very narrow band. Uh, applications, but uh, it is not really helpful for broadband um, applications like our balloons. So what we really need is a broadband material to be able to really use it over the entire bandwidth which uh, we want to cover. And this material here is uh, definitely not helpful and uh, you can't use it don't even try it because you definitely fail and this uh, three other materials which uh, I'm using here are really good I mean here uh, the red and uh, the green graph are more or less uh, very similar and uh, you see here our uh, number three marker number three is uh, pointing uh, to 3.6 megahertz and you can uh, simply see that uh, we have already 26 db attenuation and uh, as we discussed it in uh, part one we said that uh, the minimum we should be able to achieve is 20 dB because that then is a good attenuation to be able to suppress all this common mode uh, current which uh, we do not want. Okay and uh, just let us move our marker 3 to 1.8 so now you can uh, read it uh, up here marker 3 so maybe I reduce the light here a little bit. Marker 3 is now at uh, 1.8 uh, megahertz and uh, we know that is uh, within the 160 meter band and uh, well um, this uh, figure is telling us that we are really having a 21 dB attenuation and that means that a balloon which uh, will be produced with this core material will definitely work. So therefore this is the first test, first first, so this is really the first test you need to perform if you do not really know what kind of uh, material do I have and uh, can I use it for my purposes. And okay we have here um, one a core material which is uh, even better and you see when we here see marker 3, uh, 4 sorry marker uh, 4 is at uh, 3.6 megahertz already at uh, 31 dB attenuation and uh, so we really can say this core materials are really helpful and uh, they really work. And that is here a test chart. Uh, it is not uh, um, done by me, so this is done by Delta Golf Zero Sierra Alpha. 
and uh, he uh, was testing a different uh, core material and uh, I just want to show you differences and uh, you see here at uh, the marker it is at uh, 29 uh, megahertz and you see uh, we are barely reaching a uh, minus or uh, 20 db attenuation at uh, 29 uh, megahertz right uh, here and uh, it is uh, even going worse with uh, the higher frequencies so uh, you know this is a core material would, uh, which uh, I would not suggest to use as a balloon because uh, well uh, we are really only have uh, approximately 20 dB uh, available so therefore this is definitely no good uh, core material and uh, that uh, clearly shows you really need uh, to check out the material you want to use. This test is again from uh, Delta Golf Zero Sierra Alpha and uh, this, this is another uh, core material and uh, you see here at uh, Cursor point it's again 29 uh, megahertz and uh, you see okay here uh, this uh, core material is uh, reaching uh, 35 dB but uh, you see all the lower frequencies uh, up here um, do not have a sufficient attenuation so this core material is not useful so you definitely see you need to check your core material otherwise you will fail with your balloon well and if you ask me which uh, core material can I use and uh, I would say this uh, green here this green graph is uh, really a good and uh, useful material and it is uh, a core material which uh, is available all over the world and uh, that is uh, the famous FT240-43 material and uh, here is uh, what uh, I meant so that is the FT24043 and uh, this uh, 43 material is uh, for broadband applications from uh, 1 megahertz up to 50 megahertz and uh, well it is uh, made out of uh, nickel zinc material so that uh, is uh, a useful broadband uh, material and uh, it is uh, 60 61 millimeter in uh, diameter so the uh, outer um, so the outer diameter is uh, 61 uh, millimeter sorry I cannot directly convert it in uh, your uh, figures but uh, I hope this will uh, help you uh, a little bit uh, so FT240 slash 43 material is really available all over the world and uh, this is here from uh, Amiron um, from uh, Amiron uh, website so they deliver all this different uh, course and that is uh, one you definitely can use and with the right wires you can uh, definitely use it up to one kilowatt or or such okay and now the wire question so that is uh, what uh, I already said in part one we really need uh, the right wire because otherwise it won't work and uh, this here is a very nice wire for our application so the special is that uh, it is PTFE wire so that means it uh, is really able to take high heat and uh, if we of course have uh, our cores and uh, we have our our yeah let me let me use this one and when we have here our balloon then you know if the wiring is wrong like this here then it might melt and uh, this can't happen 
with this uh, special wire here. So this is AWG18, AWG18 wire and uh, it is silver finished and therefore this is a material we want to use. And I already told you if you put uh, two cores uh, together, so if uh, you put uh, one uh, on the other and then you can definitely go for, I don't know, maybe two kilowatt so that uh, needs to be tested but yeah, if uh, we are using this we are definitely on the right way. So okay, that is why a question and now let's uh, go to our balloon, so the balloon type we are going to produce and uh, we are using this uh, core so that is the FT24043 as already uh, discussed before and uh, yeah let's start uh, winding our balloon and uh, yeah let's then see how it performs okay after we have finally cl clarified our wire question and the core question we have now to clarify which is the right design and uh, yeah I have really tested uh, a lot of uh, different designs and uh, well to be honest there are not so many which are really convincing uh, me and um, so I always uh, come back to the design uh, by Delta Golf Zero Sierra Alpha and uh, really I have to say uh, Wolfgang uh, Delta Golf Zero Sierra Alpha he is uh, really uh, the expert and uh, he has uh, tested many more than um, me and uh, he knows really a lot about it because he developed it uh, always a bit further and uh, finally he ended up with uh, his design and uh, well if I compare all the different uh, designs with uh, Wolfgang's design then uh, I have to admit that uh, this is really an excellent working design and therefore when I going and uh, wind uh, Berlin I always use his design and therefore my full respect to Wolfgang Delta Golf Zero Sierra Alpha he is an expert he has a knowledge and uh, without him um, you know we would uh, properly still build a uh, balance which are not really working so therefore what uh, we are going to do today is his balloon design and uh, let's go step by step that you can really follow and uh, this one here is already his uh, design but uh, it is still uh, the wrong uh, wiring but basically it is uh, his design and uh, he is uh, doing uh, two parts the left part and the right part and then he connected uh, in parallel and uh, then this is really in this case and in this configuration how it is wired up then this is a nice one-to-one -one balloon and uh, well therefore this is what we're gonna build but uh, with the right uh, wire and by the way that is uh, what uh, Wolfgang is uh, saying as well this is really the right uh, wire for this uh, purposes and that is his suggestion as well and I only can confirm his uh, work when I tested, his, tested uh, his design on uh, my equipment I can only fully confirm his work it is still brilliant so let's go step by step and let's uh, see how we can build this excellent balloon. 
Okay, and uh, it uh, starts all with uh, this both uh, zip ties to yeah, fix the wiring uh, or uh, the, the both uh, wired wires which uh, we're gonna turn around the core in a second and uh, therefore we uh, put uh, this uh, both uh, yeah, cable fixers or zip ties or however you want to call it um, loose here on the core material like uh, so and uh, then uh, we can start our project so I just zoom it in a little bit so that you um, exactly see uh, what uh, I'm doing here so that is uh, how it looks like and uh, as I already said this is FT24043 material for broadband applications okay now we need our wire okay first of all I have uh, cut four wires of our RWG18 uh, cable and uh, I have uh, cut uh, two, uh, four pieces of uh, 80 centimeter which is approximately 31.5 inches I believe so that uh, is what uh, I have done uh, first so now we have uh, four wires of uh, our needed uh, cable and uh, yeah you should uh, prepare this first cut 80 centimeter 31.5 inches and uh, then we can directly start to put this wire here on the core material okay and uh, this here is now really the first uh, step we need uh, to fix here our two wires with our uh, zip die uh, or cable fixer or whatever and uh, yeah exactly do it uh, this way here so that uh, is uh, all what you need I hope to understand uh, how uh, it is uh, done so it is uh, really nothing uh, complicated it is just to uh, fix your wiring that uh, it uh, can't go away and uh, this is already one turn and uh, what uh, we gonna do right now is to put 11 turns in this way here onto our core material so uh, let me zoom out a little bit that you uh, see it that you uh, may have a better overview and uh, so I will put in the same way I will put uh, 11 turns here onto the core material and uh, we always can adjust it here a little bit uh, that it is here sitting very nice and tight on uh, the core material and uh, yeah okay let me bring this 11 turns in the same way I uh, have uh, shown it to you let uh, us put it in the same way here onto the material and uh, at the end uh, of our, our uh, um, at the end uh, of this uh, core of this half we will uh, fix it uh, with another uh, cable fixer as well and uh, yeah let's uh, see how it looks like um, I just put now the next windings exactly in the same manner here onto the core okay so that is how our first step looks like and uh, yeah as I said we have to put 12 turns here onto the core material and uh, we can count now here 11 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 
8, 9, 10, 11. So that is what we uh, count and the reason is that uh, if we put it once through uh, the uh, core material, so like uh, this here, so this is already one turn, so that is one, okay? So therefore we uh, can count here 11 and uh, it is uh, 12 turns. So you have uh, seen we have started here and uh, so this is now here on the top our wiring and it will be here on the back. So let me go a little uh, closer and uh, I have fixed it uh, again with a cable fixer here and uh, so it comes up here from the underneath uh, while it is here lying on the top and uh, that is uh, how it looks like and uh, you really need to pull the wire very tight here onto uh, the core material I mean yeah you can uh, move it here a little bit and that uh, might help when uh, we are gonna test it for uh, SWR because maybe we can adjust it just a little bit say SWR we will see but uh, basically you really need to pull it very very tight or as tight as uh, possible so that uh, there is not uh, too so that it is not too loose here on the material because then you are already uh, changing the parameters so therefore tight as possible okay and uh, the next step is now so that is the first half and uh, now uh, we have to put on the second half and well we do it in exactly the same manner yeah and as I said we really start in uh, exactly the same uh, manner as uh, we did it on the left half um, so let me go a little uh, closer so again we are fixing here our both uh, wire in the same way as we did it, did it here on the left side and uh, you need to put your focus on uh, that the wiring is uh, like this here in this example so here in our case the orange one need to meet uh, the orange one on the uh, right half of our core material so do not mix uh, the wiring so that uh, you have here on the right side uh, the uh, orange on the outer side or on the right side so it really needs to be uh, exactly as uh, you see it here so the both uh, the both orange uh, wires need uh, to meet uh, each other and uh, need to touch uh, each other and uh, the cable fixtures yeah should uh, be uh, as uh, close as possible so like you uh, can see it uh, here and uh, if uh, that uh, is done so that uh, you have uh, fixed your uh, wires you are following again exactly the same uh, procedure so you start winding it right and uh, again you really should pull it tie as much as possible so do it with uh, a bit force that uh, the wire is really as close as possible here on the core material and uh, I'm doing now exactly the same what I have done here on the left half so I do my 12 turns and uh, then I will fix it here once again and uh, yeah uh, as I said it is always the same procedure thus just turn it and then pull it 
tie as much as possible, then you uh, will get a good result in the end. Okay, and uh, here it is. So now the right is uh, on the right half is on as well. And um, well, we see when we uh, start here, um, we have the orange uh, on the inner side. Okay, and here where uh, it comes uh, off, we have now the orange at the outer side. And uh, that is something you uh, should put uh, your focus on. And once again, we have here 11 uh, parts we can uh, count. And uh, yeah, as we have uh, two halves, which are here on this uh, course, so the left half and the right half, and uh, we said that this material should have in best case, so the wire should have in best case 100 ohm impedance. And um, if that is the case, and uh, we put now this both coils in parallel, then uh, we will finally end up with uh, 50 ohm. And we said that um, we need uh, enough uh, turns to have enough inductivity, which uh, is uh, important that we already get the high attenuation as uh, we measured it here uh, with uh, our core uh, test setup. Um, we need enough turns uh, to be able to get our desired attenuation, especially at uh, the low frequencies. So therefore, Wolfgang tested uh, this with uh, 12 uh, turns on FD240-43 uh, uh, with uh, very good uh, results, and that is uh, what I did uh, as well. So if we have uh, done everything right, this uh, should uh, work. I have tested uh, this kind of uh, balloon, uh, balloons, um, balloons on, uh, on the dummy load with uh, one kilowatt and uh, it was uh, just uh, working fine. Of course, uh, the core material gets hot, that is for sure, and uh, the wire as well, but it was uh, working just fine, so it was really able to handle one kilowatt. And uh, as I said several times before, just uh, do uh, two of these uh, core materials, one uh, over the other, and then you can increase the uh, output uh, power without any problem. But uh, yeah, you should uh, test it. So uh, your first uh, transmissions, you uh, should um, observe, is, observe it that uh, it uh, makes no trouble. But I, I don't, I don't believe it. Uh, definitely, it definitely will work fine. Okay, so that uh, is basically uh, all. I uh, can uh, show you here concerning uh, how to get uh, the turns on uh, our core material. And uh, yeah, finally our uh, balloon is uh, ready, ready to use. Now uh, I have to switch this uh, both halves uh, in parallel to get, so that is uh, exactly uh, what I have done here uh, with uh, this one. So you uh, can already uh, see that this here is in uh, parallel. So that is uh, connected in parallel as it is uh, here as well. And uh, that makes a one to one balloon. All right, so next step is as I said, I solder it uh, together and then we are already ready for our test up to do our yeah, testing on uh, the vector network analyzer. 
So first, first uh, we are gonna tin here our wires first before we can uh, really switch them uh, together and uh, if that uh, is done I prepare our test up uh, setup and yeah let's see uh, what uh, we have uh, finally done here all right and I have now prepared our test setup and uh, yeah of course I have uh, connected uh, this wiring here in parallel as I already said we are now feeding here from uh, this side and here we have our 50 ohm uh, impedance and our mini uh, network uh, analyzer is connected to our uh, test setup so yeah that is a kind of dummy load right now so let me uh, go closer that uh, you can uh, see it so this is now really representing our antenna and uh, of course here this is our input and uh, yeah first of all we are testing input SWR so it is always important that your transceiver which is then connected here wire the coax cable to this let me call it input and uh, yeah at this side we would then have our antenna and we know that we need a low SWR and uh, we have seen here with uh, this uh, balloon that uh, we had uh, yeah not the best SWR and that was the reason that we said okay this one we can't use and uh, we said that we need the right material let's see what uh, we were able to achieve with this year and here is our result have a look is that a kind of beauty so we start here with our left marker M1 and uh, you can see uh, that uh, we have here 103 and uh, I see that it is uh, not at uh, the 160 uh, meters so now it is uh, placed in a better way so it is uh, 1.9 megahertz and we have a SWR at 103 so that is awesome and uh, we have here our marker 2 which is at uh, 28 uh, for 40 megahertz and you see we only have 1.19 and that is absolutely brilliant and uh, you see it uh, makes any difference and uh, it is it is a, a real a big difference if you have the right wiring so that uh, is uh, as I already told you what it is all about and now you uh, can already or you can still improve the performance a little bit by twisting the ends and uh, changing here a little bit uh, the wiring on the core so that uh, will then change or improve the um, SWR even better but in any case I mean uh, 1 to 1.19 so that is uh, absolutely awesome and uh, you see uh, to higher frequencies right so as I said here is our market 2, two and uh, that is 28 uh, 440 and you see here 250 megahertz because I'm scanning here up to 50 uh, megahertz just uh, to see um, that uh, we also able to work on uh, six uh, meter with uh, this balloon and um, yeah you uh, can really see that it uh, works uh, without any problem up to 50 megahertz and yeah that is uh, really what uh, we expected and uh, yeah as I as I told you when I now uh, 
go here and uh, change here a little bit um, down my uh, my wiring so I'm just trying here to twist it a little bit more and uh, you see it makes a chance chance a uh, change and uh, that means that uh, finally you really will be able to improve it a little bit uh, with uh, fine-tuning but anyways it is absolutely great as it is so that proves that uh, the wiring we are using here our our uh, a w g 18 is uh, absolutely the right uh, wire for producing such uh, balance and uh, yeah so you really can do this okay but this is only our first test so we know uh, input reflection is great but now of course we are interested in our uh, common mode rejection so that is uh, what uh, we want to see right now and remember we said minimum re really minimum you want to we want to see is uh, 20 db and uh, let's see if we are able to achieve these figures with uh, our new uh, balance here so now we are going to check for common mode attenuation so that uh, is our known test configuration so once again here at uh, this side we have uh, our common mode uh, signal our artificial so we really feed in our signal on both lines so uh, current errors in um, the same direction so that means that is really common mode uh, current which uh, we are feeding in watch uh, video um, part one so that is video 100 um, and uh, here on uh, this side we pick our signal at uh, our dummy load which is uh, representing uh, our antenna and uh, as we said we are really looking for a common mode attenuation of 20 db so that is really the minimum we need okay and here is our test result so <laughs> you may already see so all expectations are fulfilled so have a look it is really it is really nice so here marker one at uh, 1 1.9 uh, megahertz so 160 meter band with 24.4 db attenuation 3.6 80 meter band with 28 or 29 db 29.5 db attenuation marker 3 20 meter band with 36.6 db attenuation and here marker 4 in the 10 meter band 28500 with 38.4 db attenuation and that is absolutely awesome so that is really a balance which will work and will fulfill all our needs and even remember even we have to take away 2 uh, db for uh, our setup so the normal uh, attenuation 2 db because this is a one-to-one -one, um, setup and uh, therefore 2 db but even if we um, take this 2 db away from our result so that is still 22.5 db and once again that is really awesome and uh, I mean it uh, would uh, also improve a little bit uh, more if uh, I have here a good uh, te test uh, jig or uh, such. I mean, this is here flying wires and uh, 
it uh, could be better if uh, I would have it here on a PCB and uh, so it is uh, yeah it is a little bit uh, all uh, flying in the wind so that uh, is definitely not uh, really good for performances but in, in any ways it is uh, really awesome so that means this is the proof that uh, our Balan in this setup and with this design is working just fine. All right, so now that we know that uh, we have here really nice working Balan, we just uh, or I just uh, want to lead your focus once again on this wiring because uh, it is really important uh, that uh, you do not uh, choose a normal wire like this and uh, that is not only because of uh, the bad SWR which uh, we had experienced it is uh, also because this uh, balloon really needs to handle a high heat if you power it with uh, 800 plus watt output power so therefore this little experiment all right and therefore i have uh, on the right our ptfe wire and uh, left brown one here is a normal one so now we are gonna heat it and uh, yeah let's see uh, what uh, the behavior is so now yeah, you can see it directly so the normal wire is uh, melting and uh, it's uh, burning out and here our PTFE wire you see there is really no problem whatsoever and that is really needed because uh, if uh, that is really getting hot so the last really the last you need is that the wiring is shorting uh, out because of uh, a melted um, insulation here so therefore you really easily see this difference and uh, therefore beside the fact that uh, we have the bad uh, SWR with the normal wire you see there is really no oh it's quite still quite hot uh, so y you see there is no damage at all so it is still in the same good shape and uh, that is really uh, what we would uh, expect it so maybe once again uh, this way because now I think we have a good focus on that and uh, you really see how uh, dangerous here that can be because it is directly burning off and then you have uh, the wire free and uh, that will then short out and therefore don't do it and we are almost at uh, the end of uh, this video but uh, I had one uh, question regarding this uh, balloon here so that is the one uh, to four type which we uh, tested in our part one and uh, this is a guy which uh, had really a bad uh, attenuation for a common mode uh, current and uh, well, this balloon, you know, is really one of uh, the most often used uh, balloon ever. And uh, I have found this design in so many uh, aerials. Uh, you, uh, they were officially bought um, at uh, or from a dealer. So, um, you know, it uh, is a little bit embarrassing if a balloon like this is then really uh, connected to um, 
antenna and uh, you have this bad performance. And this here is the design of this 1 to 4 impedance uh, transformer and uh, yeah so that uh, is uh, what you should not do because uh, yeah you have seen the figures what we have uh, tested in part one and uh, therefore this is not recommended well and if you really need impedance transformer it has been turned out that uh, you can't do both jobs with uh, one core so what you really need is uh, two of uh, those and uh, you need to switch them one behind uh, the other that uh, the first one will do the uh, the common mode current rejection and uh, the second one will then the impedance transformer and that then will work as uh, we would expect it okay and we are really now at the end of part two of our video series about uh, balance and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy it and uh, if uh, you like it please uh, give me a big thumb up for this video subscribe and uh, yeah catch you next time bye